He says he was a regular guy who drank too much, ate too much shitty food, and then fell in love with running, which ultimately saved his life. He's now documented his love affair in a brand new book. Please welcome back to the cafe, one third of the Edge's breakfast show and best-selling author, me old mate Dom Harvey. Hey! Are you good? Yeah, yeah very well, very nice, well. Nice, nice. Miss, miss seeing you every morning, me old mate. Do you? Yeah. Oh, no, he, why don't I miss getting out of bed? He, he actually does, and that was a story because he wanted to talk about his book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's start right at the beginning. Okay. Um, what got you into running? I know this is the story about how it started, but just quickly tell us, how did you get into it? Uh, in a nutshell, I ran at school, then as soon as I finished school, like a lot of people, stopped doing any sort of form of exercise, and by the time I got to my late 20s, I was I'd blowing out and I was really quite a quite a big guy. You were, so I started, I started, oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeepers, I'd mark break. that page. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you Here you go. Can we, can we, can we, can we zoom, in, in zoom in on that? Look I, look like, I look like a giant thumb. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do, do. <laughs> and, what, and uh, of course there's a photo next to it of your tumour which, we'll, oh. which we will talk about yeah. a little later on it may, it may look like something delicious that was cooked up in the cafe kitchen <laughs> but, um, yeah. but that's all you see because you have to buy the rest of the book if you want to see the other photos so when you started running again in your 20s then how did it feel did you like it or did you hate its guts Oh no, it sucked. It was it was appalling, and you you go, you go out for like a five k run or something really small, and my this hips, my, sorry, <laughs> my hips would hurt and my shins would hurt and every part of me would hurt. And then I'd get home and go on the scales straight away and like, damn, I haven't lost any weight at all. You see, because that's the stage I'm at. Like yeah. you said, five k's like it wasn't very far, and I'm like, I've done five k's. This is awesome, but everything hurts. Yeah, but and then after a while, something miraculous sort of sort of happened. You know, like it stopped hurting so much, and I actually started enjoying it. And um, Probably even more so than the running, just the, just this f sense of like calm and well-being that I had had afterwards. So even when I reached my sort of goal weight, I just kept on running and I've been running ever since. And so, how many marathons have you done? About fifteen. Wow, full ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far out. And, I, and you know that's what surprises me, Dom. When I was working with you, you know your motivation to keep going through that pain, and I guess through what some people would call a little bit of boredom, doing the same thing <laughs> every day. What is it that motivates you to keep doing that? Um, oh, probably the, the health benefits mainly, and right. also, um, I don't know, just this incredible, incredible feeling of like calm you get afterwards, and also it, it allows you to, you know, have a few beers on the weekend and not worry about it too much. <laughs> and yeah. one thing that surprised me is that I know that you were so very uncoordinated. I hate to point that out. So was that something you had to overcome when you started well, running? That's probably why I gravitated, gravitated towards running and gave up on all team sports. Because <laughs> you know, the pass only person don't pass the ball to Tom. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was like yeah. that. So with running, the only person I'm letting down is myself. And right. Yeah. No teammates to worry about. Um, what about shoes? How many pairs of shoes do you go? through? Um, I, I change them up probably every three months or so. My, my wow. mum my says to me, oh, you got more money than since I've been running in these for eight years. But I figure it, it's the cheapest and most purest sport there is. Like, there's no actual equipment you need, no memberships, no nothing. Shoes are the, like, the only thing, so you, you shouldn't scrimp. And we said, you know, at the start that this, you know, this book is about your love of running, but it also saved your life, and we saw the picture of the tumour. So can you tell us a bit about that, without spoiling it too much? Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yes, yeah, so I had this, this, this massive tumour growing inside my um, abdomen area, and uh, the, the only reason it was to... So I remember having this conversation with you, Mike at the time, puffing on a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> so all that now. He, he, he said to me, "See, this is why you don't run, mate. It's too dangerous. It'll kill you." <laughs> um, right. But but the truth is, like, if I had not been running, that they wouldn't have discovered this um, this tumour growing in time. And so they got it, and you were obviously fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been great ever since. It, you said it's not a it's not a running how to book, of which I almost put it down because I like, well, I want to learn how to run, yeah. but it's more about stories and how you came to love it. Uh, was it? Did you, did, was, did you have to think hard about the stories that you're going to put in here? Kind of, yeah, 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 it did require a bit of thought because it's something that played on the back of my mind is, um, I mean, most people hate running, so there's one thing more boring than running is probably reading a book about it. So I, I wanted there to be some funny stories in there and uh, if you're a non-runner, hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy it as well. But, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, good enough to, to write a book, you know, telling other people how to run, but I think anyone that can walk is, is able to run, believe it or not. Yeah. yeah, and you know, there were some beautiful moments. In the, I mean, I've read the start of the book, Don, which first, is... First, like, first book he's read since <laughs> school, by the way. It's quite an achievement. <laughs> it is yeah. quite an achievement for me. No, but I love, I love what you, you said about running with um, Savin, because, you know, there's something, I guess, that happens in our modern worlds nowadays, but you found that quite a valuable time with Savin, and why was that? Yeah, so, so Savin's our 14-year-old now, and every, every time he's at home and, and uh, I'm going out for a run, I'll invite him. And... Uh, 999 times out of a thousand, he'll say no and just won't even look up from the Xbox controller. Yeah. Um, but that one time in a thousand when he comes out, it's um, yeah, it's a real special time because there's 
you, you're fully engaged with each other. Yeah, there's nothing else to talk about. you just got to chat with each other, don't you? Yeah, um, totally. I've got some small questions for you now. Chafing, is that an issue? <laughs> just some interesting things that people want to know. Chafing, chafing. chafing um, used to be when I, when I started, but when I lost, since I lo lost all the weight I needed to, it hasn't been a problem. Um, one thing, I, I don't know if this is a, a problem for uh, women, because you, you wear sports bras and things, but for guys, um, bleeding nipples. That's oh, a OK, that, you're making it sound really charming. Also, <laughs> I want to know about um, when you're doing the marathon, do you stop to go to the loo, or what do you do? Well, if you if you get the hydration just right, um, you shouldn't need to, yeah. But in, in training runs, yeah, I look for any opportunity to stop. Okay. And you know, and you you said at the start of this book that it's it's more about trying to perhaps inspire people to enjoy a bit of running. You know, people like me that you know I don't I'll take run. A, <laughs> don't run. Um, but you know, as soon as I started reading it and I saw the health benefits and I saw what it did for your life, I was inspired. So well done. You've got somebody off the couch doing a bit of running. How much weight did you actually lose? Well, at my um, when when I looked like a giant thumb, yes. uh, I, was, I was 115 and I'm uh, 85 now. Nice. So the, the problem is like I'm, I'm quite a tall guy. When when you're yeah. tall, there's lots of places to sort of hide the Stash weight. It. So, uh, you know, I probably didn't realise how un unhealthy I was, but that's a lot of extra weight to be carrying yeah. around. So oh, and, yeah, and there's another great chapter in here, another great chapter in here about what he wants to do in the Berlin Marathon. I'm not going to spoil it for you, though. You're going to have to buy the book to find out how he did. So, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. I, did, I well, enjoyed it. Well, if you don't want to buy it, just go to the bookshop and flick to the last page <laughs> and read it. Just quickly, Don, what's next for you? The next um, challenge. Tokyo Marathon next February. And once that's, that's done, it means I've done uh, all of the six World Marathon majors. Well, you can do them all again. Hey, yeah, Dom, nice. thank you so much. Um, I really liked your book. I started reading it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, Dom's Running, A Love Story is out now and available from all good bookstores. And, of course, you can listen to him every weekday morning on The Edge. Yeah, thanks, Dom. Good to see you.